Hey guys, it's me Cubix, and this is part two on my series on how to make a good cubing video. Um, in this part, I'm going to be talking about actual setups. So I'll go over different types of equipment that you might have and then different ways to set up your equipment for different types of videos. Three main types of videos that cubers usually like to do are unboxings and then also reviews, tutorials, and then solves. So I'll be talking about those three point five because unboxings and reviews are somewhat similar and hopefully this video helps you. So in my last video I talked about um, different cameras and different microphones and stuff like that. Um, from the last video I actually have not moved the setup from that video so I will quickly go over what I did for that particular video which was a vlog type video and so in the background the light there is actually a white light. It simulates sunlight and that's going to give a nice um, white light <laughs> um, that's going to cast on your cube. Um, so this is really useful for anything that's going to be um, for cubing videos, really. Um, so for solves, um, for reviews, unboxings, tutorials, you want a nice light like this. It's just going to make your videos so much better. Um, the microphone that you see blinking right now, that's the CAD U37 condenser microphone that plugs directly into the computer. Um, as I'm shooting this video, that uh, microphone is actually on, so that's why uh, it's blinking. And then the camera that you see that's also sitting on a tripod is the Kodak PlaySport, and it's sitting on a Ravelli tripod that I actually got for free from the uh, big tripod that I'm using right now. So uh, you can get something like that for $15. Or uh, if you want, you can just go to stores and get it for something like $20. Um, I have another tripod that's pretty much the same thing. I got it for $20 um, at Walmart. So uh, just hunt around. Tripods are fairly inexpensive. And you want to use it so that you have a nice stable shot. And this is a nice setup for anything that has to do with vlogs. So if you want to do like a QA and a video or you know anything like that, then a setup like this is just fine. One thing I do like about this tripod that I want to point out though is that there's a center column and the reason center columns are useful is because if you can raise it and then tilt the head you can actually get very nice first person shots without holding the camera. So as you can see now I elevated the center column and I also tilted the camera downward a little bit and this is nice because this way you can actually put the tripod on the ground and then have the camera hang over the edge of the table as if it's a person looking straight down. So this is going to be really, really useful. Of course, you want it on the on the ground, but this is going to be useful for tutorials. Um, so of course, I didn't move the microphone away um, because uh, it has to be connected to the, to the computer, and I'm standing farther back now, so I'm kind of shouting. So if the audio <laughs> is shifting around in this video, um, that's why. It's because the microphone is stationary. But I wanted to move back so that I, I could show you the general setup that I used to use and that I still use even though I use a bigger camera now for reviews and tutorials. So as you can see here the camera is pointing directly over the table almost in a first person kind of view and the only reason this is doable is because of that center column. So if you have something like a gorilla pod um, that doesn't have that center column it's going to be hard for you to get a view like this um, which is why you want to get something that's inexpensive like this but it does the job really really well and this kind of setup is perfect for reviews and tutorials. One thing though that I want to point out is that notice the placement of the light in relation to the camera. It's sort of to the side and generally speaking you want to move the light over the subject if you only have one light. If you have two lights then you can get away with a lot of different other setups. This light is what I use for all of my videos and as you can see the desk is very well illuminated and um, it's just something to consider. It's just an example of how I do things. Um, and so yeah, that's really good for pretty much unboxings and reviews and tutorials. For solves, you obviously don't want something like this because you're going to have the uh, tripod right in front of where you're going to sit. So that's just going to mess with your solves. So it's not something I would recommend. Instead, for solves, I would actually use something that you're seeing right here. Um, again, uh, where you see the window, that's where the camera is. This is almost an over-the-shoulder kind of shot, and the chair is put there so that you can sort of get an idea of where you would be sitting if you were doing a solve. Notice how the camera is actually on the left of me, um, and that has to do with the fact that the light is also on the left. If you have the camera opposite of the light, you're going to be casting shadows on your cube, and your image just isn't going to be very good. So for solve videos you want to make sure that the light and the camera work well with each other and that's going to give you the best lighting. 
However, as far as just the ideal situation that you would want to have, you actually want to do over the shoulder on the right side. So this is on the left, which is an ideal. Um, the best is on the right side, as I've been told by Brest, who is the super reconstructor um, for cubing. If you don't know him, you should. Um, but anyway, he, he did tell me that the lighting was good, except that I should be doing uh, the camera on the right side, because most of your solves, for most people, are going to involve a lot of R-turns and U-turns, and that means that if he's going to be doing reconstructions, or if people are just going to be seeing what you're doing as far as how you're solving the cube, then they want to see you actually turn the cube and not just the cube. So ideally you want the light on the right side of you, and you also want the camera on the right side, and that's going to give you a really nice shot of uh, what you're doing, which is going to be a solve. Now this kind of angle is also decent for unboxings, because of course when you do unboxings you don't necessarily have to do a first person shot, so if you do something like this, that will also be fine for unboxings. Uh, for tutorials though, maybe not the best, uh, because people generally want a first person view uh, when they see a tutorial. This is sort of unrelated, but it is something that is worth mentioning is when you actually make the video, you want to make sure that your desk is very clear and the background is also blank. And so I'm going to switch the camera view so that you can see uh, what I mean. So I haven't moved anything, I just moved the camera, and as you can see right now, the background is very cluttered. If I were to do a cube review right now, it, this wouldn't be very pleasing. It would work, uh, let me focus this, it would work, but it just wouldn't look very good uh, because it's too distracting. So something that's a lot better is to just get rid of everything here and it'll just look a lot better. So the first thing is there's a microphone here. So let me just move the microphone away. And I think it's important that I actually do this um, in this view so that you can see the change as it happens. Um, so next I'm just going to close the lid on my laptop and then I can put this mouse pad on top of that. Here this is an external hard drive. We can just push that to the back here. Um, and then here keyboard, same thing. Let's just move that to the back. And um, now, let's just get rid of this other clutter, miscellaneous cube, move all of that away, and then take away this. And so now we see that the background is a lot better. And typically, for my videos, I like to zoom in so that the cube actually takes a bigger spot on the camera. And already you can see a huge improvement, but we can do better. If you recall from the previous shot, the light was somewhat in the back. But the nice thing about this lamp that I have is that it has a hang. So even though the base might be farther back, the light itself can be brought forward. So this is nice because now we can actually move the light. So now you can see that we have the cube well illuminated. You can't see the base of the light even though the light is directly over the cube. And the background is very plain. And that's good because it's going to present the material a lot better. So something like this is a perfect angle for a review, a tutorial, um, walkthrough solves, anything like that. Um, again, not good for solves because, of course, the camera's in front of you and your solves aren't going to be very good. But for anything like unboxings, reviews, tutorials, this is such a nice setup and it's something that you should really, really work on because it will just make your videos so much better. As a somewhat awkward note, since there's nowhere else to really put this, do not talk while you're actually turning the cube. Um, because the cube is going to peak your microphone and what that means is it's just going to sort of distort the audio and it's just going to cut over your voice and you want to do these two things separately. So if you want to show the turning of the cube, don't talk while you do it. Um, that's just a note that really bugs me when I watch videos, so please keep that in mind when you make videos and hopefully you won't make the same mistake. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, this lighting is beautiful. <laughs> and um, I'm being a little bit narcissistic here, but really, this is not a difficult setup to do. Um, so if you're making reviews or anything that uses this angle, please, please, please just do something like this. It'll just make your video so much better. So that actually concludes it for camera setups. I just wanted to give you a few examples. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, and if you have different cameras, it's actually the same setup. Of course, you just have different tripods and different mounts like that. Um, but as far as angles go, I think those are really nice angles for the different types of cubing videos that you might do. Um, of course, you might have better ideas. If you do, you can obviously leave a comment. And if you have any questions about my setup, um, please do leave a comment. I can definitely be more specific if there's something that I didn't explain clearly. Hopefully this series helped you, and yeah, toodles.